Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the concept of vertical bracing. Why do we use vertical bracing and what will be the load transfer mechanism for vertical bracing? In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the concept of plan bracing. So as the name suggests, a bracing that is provided in plan or the horizontal plane of the floor or roof and that is used to resist the lateral forces that lateral force may be due to wind or earthquake so that type of bracing we call it as a plan bracing or the horizontal bracing so one such example where we use the plan bracing is pipe rack as you can see I have shown the figure for pipe rack if you see the top plan of the pipe rack we can see that there is plan bracing at the top level which will be used to resist the lateral loads now the question is why are we using plan bracing the plan bracing is used to provide lateral stability to beam and prevent its minor axis bending so for example consider an I section if you compare the moment of inertia about both the axis that is about major axis and minor axis you can see that the minor moment of inertia is very very less as compared to the major moment of inertia so for example for HE300A beam the minor moment of inertia is almost one third of the major moment of inertia since minor moment of inertia is very less and if we apply the load in the minor direction of the beam then the beam will buckle due to the minor axis bending so in order to prevent this minor axis bending we are providing plan bracing again you can see I have shown two figures in the first figure as you can see the plan of the floor we have not provided any plan bracing and if I apply any horizontal load then you can see that it is deflecting like this as you can see in the red dotted line now if I add the plan bracing then you can see that the deflection of the beam is reduced and you can see that it is reduced to one third so at each point of plan bracing it is not allowing the beam to deflect hence in the first case I need to design the beam for a length of effective length of L then in the second case I need to design the beam for effective length only equal to L by 3 since we have provided the bracing at L by 3 so by providing the plan bracing I am able to reduce the deflection of the beam I am able to control its deflection and I will also reduce the size of the beam let me show you that with the help of an example so in this example you can see that there is a pipe rack and as you know that from the piping department there will be certain loads provided to us for which we need to design our pipe rack one such load is called as the anchor load which is provided with the anchor support is provided to prevent the pipe from moving in the longitudinal direction of the pipe so in that case the anchor load might be very very large for example in this case as you can see that a load of 80 kN and 100 kN is acting on this beam now let's analyze our structure instead and what happens when this such huge amount of anchor load is acting on the beam about its minor axis okay so here you can see that anchor load is acting on these two beams now let me analyze my structure
okay let me check the utilization ratio as you can see the utilization ratio of these two beams is very high around 2.42 and 3.02 now what should I do here to pass this beam so if you see the anchor load it is acting about the minor axis of the beam okay and this is causing the beam to buckle laterally so in order to prevent the beam to buckle laterally what we are doing going to do is we are going to add plan bracing So let's add plan bracing to this. So I am adding a beam here. I will be releasing MY and MZ for this beam. I am inserting a node at the mid and then I am adding the plan bracing. For plan bracing as you know we will need to assign member truss so that it will take only axial force. Let's assign member properties as well to all these. So I am assigning IP400T to plan bracing and I am assigning IP300 to this beam. Okay, now let's run our structure and see the utilization ratio of those two beams. See, as you can see, the utilization ratio has been reduced from 3.01 to 1.43 so this is the magic of plan bracing so what plan bracing is doing when the load is getting applied laterally okay then it is getting transferred to this beam and then it will be transferred to this bracing and then through this bracing it will be transferred through column so this is how we are going to use the plan bracing in order to optimize our section. Let me show you one more example. So here you can see that at the top level lateral load is acting in the Z direction. Okay, now let's see the behavior of this structure instead. So I am analyzing the structure. Now let's see the deflection at the top level. As you can see deflection at maximum deflection at the top level is 66.38 mm now if I want to reduce the deflection what I will do I will add plan bracing so let me add plan bracing like this so I will provide plan bracing throughout its plan Okay, and I will assign member truss to all these plan bracing and assign member property as well. Okay, now let's run our structure.
now if you see the maximum deflection has been reduced to 35.429 mm initially it was 66 mm so without the use of plant bracing it would have not been possible to control the deflection so guys this is all about plant bracing thanks for watching bye for now